disabled. Hey, good morning, everybody. Dr. Todd joining you this morning, talking to you about honor the secret code of success. This is part three, part three, talking to you about honor. We just finished reading about the wise men that came and brought gifts to Jesus after his birth. A very important key point here that I'm going to make to you by honor that it says in verse 11, they presented unto him gifts. And what were those gifts? Gold, Gold frankincense, frankincense, frankincense and, myrrh. and myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I believe there's a message in all three. But that'll be for another day. What were the wise men doing? And what do wise people do? Wise people understand honor. First of all, they recognized Jesus for who he was when other people did not. And we'll make some points about that here in just a moment. Thank you for joining me this morning. I've been writing a book and putting it all together with all of my keys to honor because I believe that honor is the key to success. I believe it's the secret code to success in life. If you've never been instructed on honor, then this is a good time to begin tuning in. This is my third teaching on this. If, your ch if you never taught your children to honor, then you've never taught them to succeed in life. I believe honor is the, it's the master key to all advancement, all prosperity, uh, all promotion in life, and all success. It's the master key. And I believe that there are keys to that success and it's, it's literally a secret code. What do the wise men understand here? And the Bible considers them wise men. They have come to honor Jesus. They have come to honor Jesus as a babe, not as a king sitting on a throne. They are able to recognize. Say that word with me. Recognize. Recognize. This is going to be a key part of your understanding to honor is the word recognition this morning. So if you look on your sheet with me, I have on here, these are my honor keys and I have them numbered. Honor key number 49. Everybody got a sheet, right? Honor, number, honor key number 49. Philip, you read that to us. Honor is a gift you give to someone to show them your, your value of them. Think about what the wise men have given Jesus. Some of the most costly elements on earth. I mean, right now, gold is about $1,800 an ounce. It doesn't say how much they gave Jesus. It doesn't say how much gold they gave him, but it was more than likely a substantial amount. They didn't come in with a little, a little gold coin, you know, I mean, if you brought in a, a gold bar, I mean, you're talking four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in today's values. Frankincense is quite expensive as well. My wife buys essential oils, and frankincense is one of them that she buys. I don't know how much it is an ounce. That little bottle is hundred bucks for a little tiny bottle with just you know your little drops in it. We're talking about a very expensive oil considered the king of oils. And so is myrrh, she said. Myrrh is very expensive. They brought very costly items to Jesus for what purpose? To honor him. Say that with me. To honor him. To honor him. That's one of my keys to honor. Honor is a gift that you give to someone to show them your value of them. What were they demonstrating here? They were demonstrating their value of him. They brought the most costly of items to him. I didn't say that honor is giving a gift, although it can be, but honor is a gift. Did you see that? Honor is a gift that you give to someone to show them your value of them. 
We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. How do I do that? Honor key number 12, right up underneath this. Honor causes you to treat others as royalty. We just got finished talking about that, right? What are they doing to Jesus? They are recognizing his royalty. They're recognizing his royalty. No one else has recognized this. They come talking about a king has been born. A king has been born. And other people said, where? Where is it? Who, who's this king? Herod even said, I ain't heard about this, and I'm king over the, the whole region. Go find out where he was born and come back and tell me so that I can come worship him. Honor causes you to treat others as royalty. You honor someone, that's how you treat them. You treat them as what? Royalty. Royalty. Thank you. Honor key number 37. Sherry, how about read that one aloud to us? Honor causes you to recognize what others miss. You'll see how honor is working here in this story of the Bible and why this was put in here. Honor, people of honor were considered wise people. You can't walk in wisdom and not walk in honor. You can't separate the two. Wisdom always teaches you or directs you to honor or to walk in honor, to show honor. So what does honor then do? It causes you to recognize what other people have missed. Everybody else has missed the birth of Jesus, except some a few shepherds, and that they receive the announcements by angels. How do these wise people know that the king of the Jews has been born? They have seen a star in the sky. This star is an announcement to them that something extraordinary has happened in the earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. They know a kingdom principle that even the people of the Jews don't know. That whatever is happening in the heavens, something that has happened in the heavens is because it's reflecting what has happened in the earth. It's a signal to them. How do they know? Because they're wise people. And when they're wise people, they are looking, there's someone that needs to be honored here. Are you hearing me? Wise people are looking for how can they show honor. They have traveled from a great distance. This is not a convenience to them. Honor never is never about convenience. It's always about conveyance. Say that with me. Honor, honor. is never about convenience, never about about convenience. but about conveyance. But about conveyance. Honor teaches me that I must convey to whomever I say is important that they are important. That's why they've traveled so far. Here they have come and they found Mary. It seems like a very lowly state for a king to have arrived at. He's in the house. They come into the house and they present their gifts. What are they doing? They are recognizing what everybody else has missed. I'm telling you now, honor will make you a very different person. It will make and give you the ability to recognize what other people never, never see. That's why honor is important. Honor key number 26, right up under this. Honor is a system of value, not values. It is a system of value. I'll explain more about that later. It's a system of value and rewards. It is a system of value and rewards. And honor key number 57 here. Honor is recognition and rewards. Say those words with me. Recognition, recognition. and rewards. What have they recognized here? They have recognized that something of vast importance has happened in the earth and that this babe that has been born that we call Jesus is the most important person who's ever arrived on the planet. He's the most important person that has ever arrived on the planet. Could they say, hey, we see a star. He must be here. Good for us. No. 
They've saddled their camels or whatever their form of transportation was, probably their best form of transportation with all of their caravans and, and they've probably traveled from a very great distance. This wasn't a convenience to them. And they showed up for one reason and one reason only to communicate the value of this very important person. And they did it with a gift that they presented to Jesus to say, you are of great value. What is this going to mean to us? Let's move on here. Honor is an assignment. You see the first check mark on your sheet. It says honor is an assignment to give credit where God wants credit given. Let me read that to you again. Honor is an assignment. But people think, you know, what is my assignment in the earth? Assignment is vastly different than purpose. I have a purpose that I was created for. I have a purpose to communicate. Matter of fact, my, this is one of the most interesting things about my purpose. I'll show it to you on my purpose sheet. Y'all all have seen my, my purpose sheet right in here. Look what appears on my purpose sheet right down here in the bottom. Y'all see that? The word honor. This is connected to my purpose. I'll tell you why it's connected to my purpose. Because, and I have it drawn in here beside the church. Because in this hour of the day, this hour of and season in the earth, honor is likely one of the most misunderstood or mistaught subjects or even not taught subjects in the church. Most of the time, you cannot turn to the church to learn on the subject of honor. But God has given me an assignment, because it's connected to my purpose, to teach the church about honor, because it is going to challenge the church to go beyond where they are. This is one of my cornerstones, to learn respect and value and an attitude that creates gratitude within people. Let's move on. This is an assignment. Honor is an assignment to give credit where God wants credit given. Do you realize that God wants, there are people that God wants to, for them to receive credit for things. I don't know how many of you listening to me online or in this room, if you've ever created something, invented something, wrote something, and someone else took off with it. I have people all the time committing plagiarism on me. I've seen people, they took, they took my entire message and preached it word for word and didn't give me a, one a word for word. And I didn't even know it. Other people heard it. And so they just preached your message word for word. Took my notes. Never gave me credit once for it. There are people that God wants them to receive credit for what they've done. God wants them to be given credit. This is why God says, honor your father and mother. You realize that there are things in your life that have been good things that have put into your life by father or mother. And if you didn't have good nat natural parents, then God will give you another chance with some spiritual parents. And maybe you did have good natural parents and still needed a spiritual father or a spiritual mother in your life. There are people that God puts in our life to put things into our life, and then God wants you to give them credit for it. Are you hearing me? Y'all hear me giving credit to Dr. Kreitz all the time. He's a very important person in my life. I don't sit here and take credit for what he put into my life. I give him credit for it. You give credit where credit is due, right? That's what the Bible tells us. <coughs> Let's go on on your sheet. To take credit where someone else deserves credit is a place of jeopardy with God and a possible demotion may be coming. 
I said a possible demotion may be coming. When I get to this subject, and I'm talking about dishonor somewhere in the near future, I'm going to talk to you about David and Absalom and how Absalom operates with a spirit of dishonor. The Bible says that he stole the hearts of the people away from the king, which was his father. This was one of the greatest measures of dishonor. Ultimately, it brought to Absalom a demotion. He had put himself in a place of jeopardy with God by dishonoring his father. Are you hearing me? The same could be said about Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham put himself in a place of jeopardy with God because he sought to dishonor his father. Okay, let's move on. Honor is a focus on difference. Say that with me. Honor, honor. is a focus, a focus. On, difference. on difference. This is what honor begins to teach us. What makes this person different? Everybody is not the same. Well, we just all the same. No, we're not. No, we're not. If we're all the same, that's what Dr. Kreitz used to say. If we're all the same, then one of us ain't needed. You have to begin to know the difference in people. And honor is a focus on the difference in people. What makes this person different than that person? Is it their decisions? Is it their upbringing? What is it? I focus on difference. So two main words that's going to be associated with honor. Look on your sheet. Number one is value. Say that with me. Value. Value. Number two is, I'll just use the word important. 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 Say that with me, important. So there's two things that vi that honor begins to teach me is, because I said it's a system of value and a system of rewards, but it teaches me what is of value and what is important. What is important. Somebody needs to learn what is important in life. Who is important. That's even the, the, the greater question. Not only what is important, but who is important. So let's look at this. Let me give you some of my understanding about value. This has taken me years to understand value, and I hope that I can give you in two minutes what it's taken me probably five years to come to an understanding of. I came to an understanding of this through investing. I had to understand that there was a vast difference between value and price. People talk to me all the time about, you know, Bitcoin, $60,000. Well, it's not anymore. My question to them is, what was the value? I don't care what the price was. What is the value? I don't care if it went from a quarter to $60,000 a Bitcoin. What is the value of it? Can you tell me the value? Not the price, the value. Value is this. Look on your sheet. Regarded as a resource. What is its usefulness? How is it causing a positive return with history? If it doesn't have any history to it, then it doesn't have any evidence of a positive return. What is its usefulness? What is its regard as a resource? What am I trying to tell you about someone that is a person of value. I didn't say they have values. I'm talking about a person's value that they bring into your life. What is what is the resource that they are bringing? Are they a person of wisdom? Are they a person of character? Are they a person of, of integrity? Are they a person that you can trust? A person that you can rely on? What is their value? And when I say the word usefulness, I don't mean using someone, but what is the use? There's a lot of people that you need to really ask the question, what is the use of this person being in my life? Because there's a lot of people that have useless people in their life. They have no use. They, they're, they're using you. There's a lot of people that are getting used all the time by people. I have people every day that I encounter in my world of social media and everything else. They're just trying to use me. They've always got a handout. 
They're not really interested in what I'm saying. They're not lear- They're not interested in learning what I know. They just want what I have. Are you hearing me? Every day in your life, listen to me, young people, you are going to encounter people who are trying to get money out of you. Whether it's a salesman, whether it's a commercial on TV, somebody every day calling your house, telemarketers, ads. You, you can't even, I have more ads on Facebook now than there are posts by my friends. Somebody's always trying to get money out of you. Is that the kind of people that you want to surround yourself with? I'm asking you to think. Value is a perception. Value is determined by questions. Let me go ahead and say this. If you want to determine the value of something, start asking questions. And if somebody doesn't like the questions, then you best know you probably need to find an exit from the conversation. Because value is always determined by question. Now you can walk up into a used car lot, right? They got a price on it. Does that price mean that's the price I'm going to pay? No. Because I have to determine the car's value, right? They can put $1 million on it. Is the car worth that? What's its value? Have you asked the right questions? Same in dealing with people. Let's look at important. (coughs) Important means of great significance or value, and it affects the effect on success and well-being and being of consequence. That's what it means to be important. Very important person. A VIP. Who are the VIPs of your life? I heard a church in in Texas that they have a VIP section. You have to buy that seat to to sit in the VIP section. That means you are, you are a very important donor, not a very important person. That's where all the celebrities and the the superstars sit at because they the, that's the, how that church considers them. They very important people. They they bought the seat. That's not how we determine uh, value. A great significance. Great significance. Jesus determined things vastly different when it came to important people. He watched people donating at the treasury, right? They were walking in, giving their gifts. It says they were given from their wealth, vast amounts. And then the widow comes in with her two mites, throws it in. Jesus says she gave it all. They gave out of their surplus. She gave it all. You see how he is is determining value and importance. Effect on the success and well-being. You can't do much with people who aren't all in. Are you hearing me? That's how I determine things. If somebody's not all in, if they're not all in with me and where I'm going, I can't do much with you. The jury's still out. That's why God even says he can't do anything with lukewarm people. He said either be cold or be hot. One or the other, make a decision here. I can't do I can't do anything with you except spit you out of my mouth. Going on here. So I must begin to think. Look at your sheet with me. I must begin to think. Look at somebody beside you and tell them I must begin to think. Now look at them and tell them, you must begin to think. I believe this is one of the highest requirements that's coming on the church in this day, is to begin to think. What have I got to begin to think? One, who do I need to honor? Say that with me. Who do I need to honor? Who do I need to honor? That was real weak. Who do I need to honor? Who do I need to honor? The second thing that I need to think is how do I need to honor them? Who do I need to honor and how do I need to honor them? Who am I talking about that needs to be honored? Well, there's a lot of, a lot of different people that need to be honored. Who do you consider important in your life? If you consider them an important person in your life, 
then that's the person that you need to honor. If they're important, then you've got to begin to figure out how do I honor them? How do I honor them? I'll tell you how you honor them. You begin to find out what their likes are. You begin to find out what their preferences are. You begin to, to find out uh, you know, what brings them pleasure. Let me give you some examples of that. When I would show up in Florida at Dr. Crike's house to honor him, I'd show up with a couple of bottles of it's called Dad's Cream Soda. That's what he liked, not me. I could care less for a cream soda. Mm -mm, not my thing. But I would make a special trip to find them. Whether well, the food line, big lot, somewhere. Y'all might have even heard of it. That was one of his favorite drinks. It's called Dad's Cream Soda. I would bring him a couple of bottles of Dad's Cream Soda. Because that's what he liked. Or I'd bring him some oatmeal raisin cookies. Because I knew he loved oatmeal raisin cookie, even though he wasn't supposed to eat this stuff. We try to find ones with Stevie or something. I found out what he liked. Are you hearing me? Yes. I found out his preferences. I didn't I didn't really care for oatmeal raisin cookies. But when I'd hand them to him, he'd look delighted and he'd say, Have one with me. I'd say, Okay, I'll eat one with you. He offered me a cream soda, and I said, I'll drink it with you. <laughs> Just to honor you. <coughs> Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay? How do I honor them? I honor them by one, I'm paying attention. I'm paying attention. I pay attention to his likes, his preferences. What made what made his life more pleasurable? I'm trying to tell you how you honor somebody. Okay? This is not hard stuff. Look at somebody beside you and tell them this ain't rocket science. This ain't rocket science. No, it's not. Honor key number eight. Honor causes you to think not about your convenience, but in the terms of conveyance. What am, what am I conveying? What was I conveying to Dr. Christ? You're important to me, and what you like is important to me, and your pleasure is ha and your happiness, they are important to me because you're important to me. Right? That's what I'm doing. I'm, I have to figure out how I'm going to show honor. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I have to figure it out. Now, what does that mean? That means I got to be paying attention. That means I got to be listening. I've got to be watching. Right? If I wanted to honor my wife, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring her a bowl of fruit because she doesn't like fruit. I would bring her something that would honor that she likes, a preference. You don't, you don't bring what you like. Are you hearing me? Honor is not about your preferences. It's about what the other person prefers, what brings them pleasure, what makes them happy. Okay? This is important in the, the understanding of who God is. Because Christian people talk about, oh, we honor you. But do you really? Do you know how to honor God? I mean, it's difficult enough trying to honor people. Now we're talking about honoring God. People say, well, I'll start honoring God and then I'll, I'll get down to people. Why don't you start with people and then try to work your way towards, I'm talking about, we're talking about royalty here. We're talking about the king of the universe. The Bible says that I honor the Lord with my wealth or my substance. This means I can't come with, I can't come empty handed. Well, we just come empty handed that's not how you honor God. I'm trying to tell you that there is a secret code to success in the earth, and it's based on the principle of God's kingdom called honor. That's how God's kingdom operates. It operates off of honor. It's the currency of the kingdom. Most Christian people are flat broke because they don't understand honor. Honor does something. It's a kingdom principle that causes success in the earth. It causes promotion in the earth. It causes advancement in the earth. Why? Because honor creates favor. Favor creates access. Access creates opportunities. 
I want to have favor with both God and man. Are you hearing me? Jesus increased wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. Tells me completely that Jesus knew how to walk in honor. He demonstrated it. That's why the story is there. We see even before any of this, the wise men, say that with me, wise men, what did they do? Wise men. Wise. What did they do? They came and honored Jesus. That's why they're considered wise. <coughs> honor key number nine here. Honor causes you to ask what? Uncommon questions. Now, honor will cause you to ask questions, but it also asks you to, to ask uncommon questions. What was the questions that I was just talking about? What is he like? I was talking about Dr. Christ. What is he like? This is stuff that, that he, it wasn't like he was saying on his nightly broadcast. This stuff I had to listen for. I knew the man liked Cracker Barrel. So what would I do? I'd show up and give him Cracker Barrel cards, you know, gift cards. At Christmas, birthday, and in, in between. Why, what am I doing? I'm honoring him. The man liked Cracker Barrel. Every day. Three meals a day. Not my thing. He called me... He called me on his way from Maryland going back to Florida. And he said, I'm coming through your way. I'm going to stop by and see you for about an hour or so. We'll stop and eat something. Where you want to eat? I said, let's go to Cracker Barrel. He said, that sounds like God. So what I do, I met him at Cracker Barrel in Rock Hill. Because I know that's where he liked to eat. Wasn't my preference. It's his. What am I doing? I'm... Showing him honor. It causes me to ask uncommon questions. When honor becomes your lifestyle, look at this power statement. This is, I, I'll call this one of my power keys to honor. I haven't given it a key number yet. But when honor becomes your lifestyle, prosperity becomes your outcome. If somebody rips me off on that one, you're a plagiarist because that was given directly to me by the Holy Spirit. When honor becomes your lifestyle, this is the Holy Spirit talking to me. Are you hearing me? I'm listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say about honor. And he said to me, when honor becomes your lifestyle, prosperity will become your outcome. Amen. It's that simple. People say, well, you have any prosperity teachers? No, I'm teaching people how to honor. I'm teaching you how to honor. What happens when you begin to honor? Prosperity is the outcome. Isn't that what Proverbs 3 teaches me? The honor of the Lord. He says, what will happen? Your barns will be filled with plenty. Your wine vats will burst out with new wine. When honor becomes your lifestyle, prosperity becomes your outcome. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Honor then does what? It guarantees a future of favor. People say there's no guarantees in life. There's one. I just gave it to you. Honor guarantees me a future of favor. What did we understand about Joseph? Joseph obviously understood how to honor his father. Everywhere that Joseph went, the same story is told. He gets favor. Now, he didn't have favor with his brothers until later they were jealous of his favor favor is very hard to to hide when you get when somebody is showing favor to you and people talk about well they they can't have favorites or favoritism it's going to happen i don't care what when somebody knows how to walk in honor favoritism happens Period. I'm telling you. Well, I just treat my all my children the same. Right. No, you won't. Because if you've got one that dishonors you and one that honors you, it's it's a natural thing. I'm telling you now. You you can try to be as fair and even as possible. But when somebody when somebody honors you and somebody dishonors you, it creates 
favor or disfavor. And that favor or disfavor does something about access to your life. Do you want people continuously coming into your life that dishonor you by dismantling you, discrediting you, putting you down? They always got something negative to say about you. Do you welcome them into your life and open the door to that all the time? Then you, listen, you are a person that is wide open for abuse. People are going to abuse you. And then you're going to become a victim. And... No, you've allowed people to abuse you either verbally, physically, or whatever. You have to put a stop to it. If you're going to be a person of honor, you cannot let people dishonor you. If you're going to walk in honor, you can't go around letting people just trash you and everything else. I, I had one of my statements about honor the other day. And somebody made a little snide comment, you know, about it. And said something about, well, aren't you just an Einstein? And I put, I sat here and I thought, should I comment to them? And you know what I did? I put on here, here's example A of what I was just talking about. A dishonorable person. I'm not going to let people just talk to me anyway or say, any, no, no. And it's not that I'm trying to defend myself. I don't, I don't have a tolerance for dishonorable people. You know why? Because dishonorable people is always the same outcome. Devastation. They will always bring devastation. It bothers me to see my children dishonor one another. The way they talk to one another. Treat each other like they have value. Me and April tell them all the time. We're not going to be here all the time. And, and one day it's just going to be y'all. And what have you created among one another? You know, is it going to be one of the situations when, when they're ringing your phone and you see who it is, you think, I ain't answering that because I don't want to hold a conversation with this person. Do you know why that's happened? Because somewhere there's been events of dishonor in the past. And honor has now it has created uh, disfavorable conditions which... You don't want somebody accessing your life. There are people, I don't want them talking to me. There are people that, that send me messages that have dishonored me in the past and act like everything's okay, and it ain't okay. Yep. And I don't answer them. Well, ain't he just cold and empathetic? No. I decide. I decide. You're not going to manipulate me. I decide who has access to me and who doesn't because Access to me as a person of honor is an opportunity for somebody. And I'm not giving some people an opportunity. Because if they get an opportunity, there are some people that they want access to you just so they can find some dirt on you. Yeah. You better pay attention to who wants access to you and why. Not everybody that, that claims to be a friend is a friend. And sometimes you find out that way too late. Now I'm talking to you as a 50-year-old guy. Please listen to me, young people. Not everybody who's a friend is a friend. Yeah. You find that out sometimes way too late in life. But I do know this. Honor guarantees me a future of favor. Wherever Joseph went, he knew how to honor. Potiphar's house, he gets favor. Then Potiphar's wife wants to do him a favor. He says, no, we ain't doing that favor. Wrong favor. See, sometimes favor can encourage the wrong people to think that they have way too much access. Yep. So he says, nope, uh, Miss Potiphar, we ain't doing that. And then she falsely accuses him, and he goes to prison. But then while he's in prison, he gets what? Favor. His favor in the prison is what gets him an opportunity in the palace. His opportunity in the palace, he understood how to operate in honor. That's why I thought, how in the world could Pharaoh promote a guy within a matter of minutes? Because kings have to understand honor. Now you can walk around and say, well, you know, we, we are kings and priests <coughs> unto God. Most of the church understands priesthood, but they don't understand kingship. 
That's why God has brought about the movement of apostles and the apostolic movement to begin talking to you about the principles of the kingdom because you begin thinking like a king and not a priest or more so. The church has not understood kingship because it can't understand honor. Everything is about sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. That's another message for another. Let's go on. Honor key number 40 because honor invokes divine favor. Nobody can take this away from you. No matter if they try to sell you, throw you in a pit, you know, sell you off as a slave. When you've got the divine favor of God, ultimately the outcome is going to be a prosperous situation. That doesn't mean you ain't going to have to go through mess. That doesn't mean that people ain't going to turn on you. That doesn't mean that people and situations don't turn sour because some people are not going to like your favor. Some people are not going to like the way you honor somebody because they're not willing to do it. Are you hearing me? You get called all kind of names. Don't you stop showing honor to someone you consider important in your life because of someone else's opinions about it. Are you hearing me? I'm fixing to cover that right here. Honor is a revelation. Boy, this is the revelation that the church needs in this hour. It needs a revelation of honor. But it's only revealed to the humble. That's why most people cannot receive the revelation of honor. Because it's only revealed to the humble. This revelation only comes to the hearing ear. I have a notation about scripture here. Proverbs 1 and 5 says what? All of my children should know this one. Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear. hear and increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain to wise counsel. There's one scripture that I have talked about more in my home to my own children is Proverbs 1 5. A wise man will hear. That's all he's got to do. He has to hear. Are you hearing me? Are you listening or are you hearing? Is, is, is my voice just noise or are you actually hearing what I'm saying? Because a wise man hears and he does what? He increases. When you hear, you increase. Revelation of, of honor only comes to a hearing ear. You have to be willing to hear this in the first place. Hearing only comes by focusing. This is why most people cannot... They can't hear anything today because they can't focus long enough. We probably have the shortest attention spans that's been known to humanity. Even marketing teaches you. If you haven't captured them within 1.2 seconds, they're gone. You can't do no long posts and all this stuff. You have to just get it and... and if they haven't seen it in a one and a half, 1.2 seconds, they're gone. Because people can't focus. People can't focus, they can't hear. If they can't hear, they can't receive revelation. If they can't receive the revelation of this, they can never walk in honor. I'm moving on here. Honor does not consider other people's opinions of those they honor. Are you hearing me? I'll give you an example again with Dr. Christ. Do you think I really cared what anybody thought about him? No. You could think I was Looney Tunes, lost my mind, whatever. The reason for that is it will make you insane. If you're trying to honor somebody, think about, <coughs> I'm just thinking about Noah for just a minute, right? Noah's having a bad moment. Good people have bad moments. Righteous people have bad moments. God said there was nobody else righteous in the whole earth but Noah. Then after they get off the boat, he plants a vineyard, makes some wine, gets drunk, naked in his tent, right? Now this wasn't for everybody's eyes to see. And some things you see and you wish you could unsee. But there's things that you see that you just have to back out and be quiet about it. But he had a son named Ham, and Ham said, you know what, I'm going to go tell everybody, hey, hey, Shem, Hey, Japheth, guess what? Daddy done got drunk and, and he laying up in the tent naked. Y'all want to see? You want to see what I saw? What's he trying to do? 
He's dishonoring Noah. You know what Shem and Japheth did? They said they took a covering and they walked backwards into his tent. They weren't going to look on his nakedness and they covered up their daddy. What were they doing? Honoring him? When I'm, on, when I'm showing honor to somebody, I don't care what somebody else's opinions of that person are. I've had people come to me and say, well, well yeah, you, you listen to so-and-so, and let me show you a video of, of them from 20 years ago. I don't care what they believed or thought 20 years ago. I believed and thought all kind of crazy stuff 20 years ago, and so did you. And if somebody would have followed you around with a camera 20 years ago, what would everybody believe about you? That's true. Mm -hmm. Other people's opinions of someone I consider important are unimportant to me. Your, your opinion of whoever's important to me is unimportant to me. Because I... I'm telling you, a dishonorable person will try to discredit or dismantle somebody. I'm trying to tell you how you distinguish the two. Is this me being blind? Look at it on your sheet. No. I'm choosing to not be confused. Dishonorable people are people of confusion. They bring confusion into your world. You will be so confused about somebody. Well, they're important, but this person says that they're this and that. You're not confusing me. Opinions will confuse you, and they are the devil's tool to sow dishonor into your life. Are you hearing me? I came to this conclusion this week that dishonor is a magnet for devils. They're drawn to it. Yeah. The word devil means slanderer. That's what it means in Greek, slanderer. Somebody who's slandering someone is bringing dishonor to somebody and it's a magnet for devils to come to. And some people don't like that. Some people don't like that kind of speech. I posted this on Facebook. I got the fewest response that dishonor is a magnet for devils. People don't like that. I'm telling you what they're drawn to. Well, I'm exposing them. I'm bringing truth about them. Since when did God instruct you to bring dishonor to other people? I can't find one place in the Bible that it tells me to dishonor people. It actually tells me honor all men. Does this mean people I don't agree with? Oh, this is enlightening now. Honor people that I don't agree with? Well, honor ain't never about agreement anyway. Well, I don't agree with them. Well, this is some serious stuff. Y'all better... We're moving on here. I put on here, this is why I avoid dishonorable people at all costs. What's the dog barking at? Hmm? All right, let's move on. See that skull and crossbones near the bottom of your page that says dishonor, will, dishonor is a magnet for devils? And I put on here, this is why I avoid dishonorable people at all costs. There are people that I do not allow into my world because they are a dishonorable person. They dishonor other people. It's okay for you to identify that. Now, if they make a turnaround, okay. Good for them. I hope they do. I pray that they do. That still doesn't mean that I have to allow them into my life. Here's what goes on with this. Offense becomes impossible when honor is your chief goal. Everybody's offended nowadays. Some people are looking to get offended. They're looking for anything to be offended by I can go ahead and tell you, honor is not their chief goal. If you make honor your chief goal, it becomes impossible for you to become offended. Well, what they said offended me. Well, did you ever show the person honor? I don't know. You have to answer those questions. Honor seeks to create a good experience. Are you a good experience? 
Are you a good experience for other people? Honor seeks to create that. I didn't say it always does. Sometimes you're dumb, you're goofy, you foul up. You didn't show honor where honor was due. Or you were trying to and it wasn't the right way. But it's seeking. It's seeking to be a good experience. Honor creates a connection of trust. It's a very important point. Creates. This is vastly different. I, this is not on your sheet. I'm not talking about people that flatter you. Honor is not flattery. Honor is not flattery. This is one of my keys. I don't remember which number it is, but honor is not flattery. It's felicity. What does that mean? It creates admiration. You have to... You admire something about somebody. You can't learn from anybody you don't admire, Dr. Christ used to say. Admiration is an important place to who you honor. Something that you admire about them. Dishonor creates division and discord. Dishonor creates that. If there's division, discord, and strife, and fighting going on, that's because there's dishonor somewhere. And I'm done with my last point here. Honor is an understanding. Say that with me. Honor is an understanding. What am I understanding? I'm understanding two things. How to identify and recognize difference. How to identify and recognize difference. And how to reward the difference. That's what it's an understanding of. Honor is an understanding of how to identify and recognize difference. I honor my wife. There is no other woman in the whole world like her. Eight billion people on the planet. Not another woman like her. In my mind, she would be impossible to replace. Impossible. Impossible. I even tell my sons, I don't know what y'all going to do, because I don't think you could find a better woman than my than your mama. You're going to have to search very hard. I mean, Solomon even said, who can find a virtuous woman? Yeah. I mean, this man had a lot of women. That doesn't mean it's impossible, but once you've found one, Honor her. All you young guys, anybody that's listening, show honor. Show them how important they are. Communicate it to them. Say it to them. Say it more than just words. Say it. Sometimes you got to say it in a gift. That's what the wise men did, right? They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because what were they doing? They were communicating with a gift. Because honor is a gift that I give to someone to show them my value of them. This is how much I value you. I'm giving you the most expensive thing that I can possibly find on the earth. Treasures. It says they opened their treasures. They wanted to communicate how important Jesus was to them. All right. Thank you, everybody, that's joining me. Janie. Hey, Timonia, Miss Sands, I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you for joining me. Everybody else that's here, I'm going to sign off from here today. I won't be live next Sunday because it's Christmas morning, and uh, we're going to be celebrating Christmas with family. But until next time, I will see you, and uh, I'll continue talking with you about honor. It's the secret code to success. Thank you today. Bye-bye.